Hello and welcome to Discover Energy Work and today I have Dr. Lisa Thompson uh, here with me and it's a special day because it's kind of like, well, like the background on my Zoom, we're kind of like already a little bit out there and out of space, um, although I don't really know the story. So I've got to say, like, that's maybe me jumping ahead. Good morning, uh, Dr. Lisa Thompson. Can I call you Lisa? Yes, please. Do call me Lisa. And thank you so much for having me here. <laughs> Lisa, it's, uh, well, it's great to have you here. How are you today? I am doing great. I actually, I'm in Hawaii, so I have the fan blowing on me. So <laughs> pardon my blowing hair. <laughs> Well, I'm in Chiang Mai. I'm not in outer space looking at the world. Yeah, I'm in Chiang Mai. And uh, so it's it's just early morning. You're you're kind of like early for me, as it were. Um, now, I mean, I'm fascinated by your story because I was posting something on, um, I think, the group that we're both members on saying, I post regularly. So tell me your transformational story. Tell me your healing story. And I think you posted saying you'd had... Uh, you've got a podcast and so on. I was like, wait a minute, this sounds like a really interesting person. You have a you have a PhD in marine biology. You, you, you've got the smarts and then you're involved in something which people would go, you've got to be crazy, yeah, to, to be involved in, am I right? So tell me what, what happened? How did you go from like, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe was it a childhood thing? Did you know about aliens and what, what happened? I did. So, yeah, um, so I grew up in an esoteric metaphysical spiritual household. So um, my mother was an astrologer Start when I started, um, I was age two, when she started taking astrology classes. Wow. And so um, all of her friends were either astrologers, psychics, witches, tarot card readers, etc. Hmm. And so that was just a normal part of my life. And then when I was 13, we moved from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in the United States to Yelm, Washington to attend a spiritual school of enlightenment. And the school was taught by a channeled ascended master from Lemuria, um, an entity known as Ramtha. And hmm. so starting at age 13, I was learning about higher dimensional reality, creating your reality, um, mm -hmm. quantum mechanics, mm -hmm. things beyond like normal physical reality. And so interestingly enough, I have been an experiencer of UFO and ET phenomena my entire life. It did start in my childhood. Wow. And so my first conscious memory of being on a spacecraft was actually when I was 15. So I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And um, would you like me to share that story now? Or yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like you said since childhood. Is that the first first memory of actually having any contact? That's the first conscious memory, and I say that because I later understood that I had been with this group many times throughout my childhood, but they didn't let me remember it. Whereas when I was fifteen, they let me remember it, and I. I understand now why, because I was able to have it validated by a former very high government official that knew about the different ET groups that our government knows about and even works with. Mm. And so, um, so that was a really pivotal point in my life, having this experience, which was actually quite beautiful. It was mm. nothing scary like some of the other um, people's experiences in the 80s of being taken. And so what it really did was plant the seed for the work I do as a galactic ambassador and channeler. Mm. But even with that, I still, like in my teen years, I wanted to be normal. I wanted to fit in. Yeah. And so I didn't let it affect my life too much, except well, for knowing. Well, you, were at, you were at school. I, I mean, I imagine at 15, you're at school. And what did they come, did they park in the parking, you know, the, the <laughs> car park and, and, and parking lot and, and they kind of sort of said, oh, come in, we got a, we got a spaceship outside. Come on, well, so, sound. Yeah, so it was a nighttime experience. Um, so at the time uh, we were living on 20 acres, um, kind of out in a small town community. Hmm. And I don't remember how I got on the craft. I just remember all of a sudden I'm in this spacecraft 
And it was a smaller shuttlecraft. It was just me and my ET guide. And the thing about it, I wasn't scared at all. He looked very human when he picked me up. And I felt like I knew him, like I had been with him before. And so we take off, we're flying through space. And the craft itself, um, being inside of it, the walls were completely transparent where you could fully see out into space. So it looked kind of like your background where you could see the darkness of space, the pinpoints of the starlight Mm -hmm. as we're passing through different gas layers, just the beautiful colors of that. And we finally land where we were going. And I asked him where we were. He said that we were inside of Io, which is one of Jupiter's moons. And then he started touring me around what looked like a hospital facility where I could see into different rooms and there were different people being examined, but nothing scary. There were probes and, and everyone looked really human. And so my next question to him was, you know, are you human? Is everyone here human? And he said that, no, those of you that we brought here are human, but we are not. We are humanoid, but we disguise our form because it scares you because it's really extreme. And so then my next question to him was, well, why, why are we here? Why, why am I specifically here? And he said that those of us that had been chosen to be brought there were being tested to see if something happened on earth, if we could live in an environment like that or something similar. And this was back in 1988. So we were still in the cold Mm. war. We were on the verge of World War III at that yeah. point. Yeah. And, and so there really was a timeline where something bad could have happened. Mm. And at the end of the tour, I, I asked him if I could see what he really looked like. So as a kid, I was super obsessed with animals. And the weirder the animal, the better. And so I thought whatever form he showed me that I would be fine with it. So when he actually showed me what he looked like, he was about seven feet tall pure white skin, big dark eyes, and very long red hair, like fire engine red hair. (laughs) Mm. And very extreme in terms of coloration, the size. So I could see why some people would be afraid of that or have some fear Mm. with that. Mm. So after that, I was returned back home. And I remember laying in my bed thinking, okay, that is the weirdest dream I've ever had. And so for several months, I thought it was just a dream. However, dreams, you typically forget the details within the first 10 minutes. But I I remembered the experience. It was really vivid in my mind. And then so fast forward several months later, I was reading Whitley Strieber's book, Union. Are you familiar with that book? I am. Very, very, um, yes, really... um... A good book. It's very atmospheric. You really feel connected with Whitley. He really writes it well. Yeah. So at that point, he was writing about his experiences of being taken by gray aliens. And mine, obviously, were not the same group. But at the end, he is interviewing different people that had been taken by ETs. And they all have the same kind of gray experience that he's having, except for one guy that he interviewed had a completely different story. And this guy was telling Whitley that he had been told he was one of the chosen ones and taken to a moon of Jupiter. And Whitley made a little side comment, kind of sarcastically, I hope it isn't Io. And when I read that, I had head to toe chills down my body, tears Mm. started coming down my face. And so that was my body's way of telling me that was not a dream. That was a real experience. Now, I went and told my mom, knowing she would believe me, because again, we were in the spiritual school learning about different realities. Mm. And so I told her she did believe me and she got really excited. And the school that we were going to at the time, um, it was of interest to the U.S. government. They had sent CIA and high government officials to spy on what we were learning because we were learning things like remote viewing and telepathy and really enhancing the Claire abilities. Mm. And so some of those people that came to the school actually left their government positions, became real students. And so my mother knew one of these guys that had been formerly very high government, knew about the different ET races that the government knows about and works with. Mm. So she introduced me to him. I shared my story. When I got to the point of describing what they look like, 
he thought for a moment and he was like, you know, I don't know that race. He said, but there are so many ET races out there. We don't know all of them, but he said, you had a real experience. Mm -hmm. And so again, just now at that point, I was 16. That was just huge for me, not having to go through my life thinking, number one, I'm crazy or that I had made it up. Mm -hmm. I was a dream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know what, um, what occurs to me that which, which uh, I'd be curious to hear your, your response on is, do you think you were in um, another dimension, like uh, you'd gone from sleep into another dimension? And uh, say, if we went to the the planet, we wouldn't find these things, because they are actually in another dimension. So that's a really good question. Um, what I do understand about this group is they are probably fourth, fifth dimensional beings. And so, um, and also being that they are inside of the moon, we don't typically, when we're doing drive-bys of the planetary bodies in our solar system, mm-hmm. we don't go inside. Now, my understanding though, is that there are different planetary bodies that do have life, including human type of life, inside that are higher dimensional different dimensional where we wouldn't see them like you're saying so this group specifically i think they just colonized that moon and they aren't necessarily still there Mm. but they were they didn't um originate there let's say um now i have had experiences with other et groups since then um notably Five years ago, I met my Arcturian family, and they are in a much higher dimensional reality where they definitely do not um, densify into physical reality here on Earth. In order to experience them, it is a deep inward journey to then connect with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. So, so, um, so you had that, was it like you had lots of experiences after that initial experience or was it like literally uh, because I mean I've talked with a lot of people and and, and I've got the, the, not all the people I talk to are on my podcast but uh, I'm fascinated in people's journeys and their stories because I believe that if you're having a journey in and like you you had no point of reference you think oh, am I crazy uh, this is all made up or that was just a dream and then when somebody is able to say, okay, look, I, I can just tell you my dream, you're not alone, or, or I'll tell you my experience, you're not alone. Uh, you, I think that community is so healing and helpful and supportive. So yes. it, it it is beyond judgment for me. It's, it's literally about supporting people. Um, and I'm curious, from then, was it like you from 15, you kind of lived your life and then suddenly something happened? Or did you say, oh, I'm I'm I've got this job. I've got to con- contact the aliens where, you you know, like, I mean, let's say, you know, tinfoil hat. Did you go right. tinfoil hatty or did you just go, ah, it's a thing. Uh, I've got lots of other things like remote viewing. I'm studying um, or whatever. Um, yeah, that's yeah, a really what- good question. Really good question. And. I would say um, for the most part, I just, I was able to move on with my life. I wasn't like I was fixated and I didn't really go down that rabbit hole. Um, I I acknowledged, but I I was always looking up at the sky because I always felt um, that there was a different home for me. I never necessarily felt like earth was Mm. home. Even my family was that much of like my family. Mm. And now I understand why I kind of felt that, but, you know, I, again, I was trying to be normal in high school and then I went right into college, got my degree in marine biology. Then I was in graduate school and I can tell you, so telling my really conservative academic friends about me, my, my experiences with ETs and even believing in things like Sasquatch, fairies, dragons, and Mm -hmm. we're all zoologists marine mm, biologists mm, right mm, mm. we're we're out there looking for new species and and working with them but they thought i was crazy that i could believe in things that we don't necessarily have that physical proof on right and so i learned that okay if i'm going to be taken seriously in my career i need to keep my mouth shut and so there were only a couple of people that i could trust with sharing you know what i really understood 
Mm-hmm. And so I tried to go like be tunnel vision for quite a while in science. I got the PhD, did the postdoc. I got the tenure track professor job and I was still doing my spiritual work. And what I was learning at that point um, in science, we were learning quantum mechanics and brain physiology, the rewiring of the brain, epigenetics. And this is mm-hmm. the late nineties when wow. I was learning this stuff. And so it really, our academic science was so far behind what I was learning at my spiritual school. And so I ultimately left academia because it ended up not being a good fit 20 some years ago for me. And so I, I still had like the normal journey of career. Mm -hmm. Um, I I was going to my spiritual school, you know, kind of like someone goes to church. Um, so that was my side life. And then I had my career where I ended up being in the mortgage industry for five years. And then I went into interior design and had a business for 12 years. Mm -hmm. And so six years ago, I started my spiritual business and I really, um, I never thought when I was growing up and even in my early adulthood ever thought I would have a business that was spiritually based or that I would ever feel comfortable opening up about my experiences and writing books about it and talking about it, teaching about it. But, Hmm. um, so spiritual business started six years ago and I moved to Hawaii from Olympia, Washington, almost three years ago. And it was when I moved to Hawaii, that's when I finally felt comfortable that I could actually start sharing my stories. So I started writing about them, sharing it on my my blog, on my website, in my newsletter, on Facebook. And people were reaching out to me, just thanking me because it was validating their own experiences. And so then I was like, because I didn't know how people were going to take it, right? Because all of a sudden here I'm, switching from past life regression therapy and human design. And now I'm talking about extraterrestrials. Mm. And so I, after writing and getting people just really responding beautifully to my experiences and stories, I ended up writing my book connection to the cosmos. And I started my podcast where I just felt like, okay, I'm whoever needs to hear this, whoever it's time, like it's time in earth's history for people to start normalizing this. And so, you know, 35 years ago, when I had that experience of the spacecraft, you know, we were still very close-minded. People did think that we were crazy, those of us Mm -hmm. that had experiences. And now people are starting to open their minds more. And finally, some of the governments around the world are starting to admit that this is real phenomena. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, well, firstly, I think it's a fascinating journey. I think the, the, the fascinating journey is from tenure. So you've got a secure position, you've got money, you've got, you've got a status, you've got recognition. Um, I say stepping off the cliff into, uh, what, selling, selling (laughs) mortgages. Right. Um, (laughs) Yeah, could it be more different? And uh, and then, uh, and I feel there's a fascinating um, difficulty in spiritual business because, like, well, it's almost like they're an anathema that they're the opposite terms. Like spiritual and business, no, it needs to be, it needs to be from the heart. But if it's like, yeah, it's. It's from the heart if you give me da 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 da. So I can imagine, uh, you know, there's all kinds of different, um, you know, experiences and journeys that you've, you've little journey, journeyettes, you've gone down, uh, gone down. And uh, I, I feel like also because I've, I haven't had those experiences. I had one lady is talking to in Hong Kong and she 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 was doing yoga. It's just this is some feedback for you. She's doing yoga for the first time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She goes into this pose and uh and then she appears in another place. Mm. She t- she there's a guy there with a turban on and he talks to her for like half an hour. 
and says things. He has, he keeps on telling her things, and she's like, you know, she's a psychologist. She's she's like me. We're we're studying psychology together in university in Hong Kong, and um, she she gets back into her body, and everybody's standing around her in the yoga class, going, oh. Oh, thank goodness you're back. She said, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. She'd been there like that for like half an hour. And she felt like she was in the other place for a different period of time. And right. she said, it's not, she has a clear memory of it, but it's not like a normal memory. She, it's becoming clearer and clearer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And our, how, you know, we, we study memory. Me memory's not really like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I felt it was fascinating because in a way, for me, it's what you're saying, validating this. Uh, I'm having an experience, but it's not like a normal dream. And yeah. it's a lucid dream. I don't know what it is, but it, it's like I was in an I mean, yeah, if you're in another place. But I mean, that that's me saying maybe it's another dimension, which I have no we don't know, do we? Um, and uh, I mean, some of us, we know it for ourselves but we can't necessarily prove it at this point. Right. No, I mean, it's still valid. I mean, you know it for yourself. It's still valid. Uh, yeah. It's, it's uh, I think, you know, especially for our identity and our our confidence, I think it's, you know, extremely important. So, yeah. Um, so I suppose I, I'd be curious about anecdotes. The, uh, you know, wh when was your next big experience, I suppose, well, so my, I, I got off the spiritual path for a short time when I had left my first ex-husband because he, number one, he was extremely abusive, very toxic. And I, um, I just needed, he was in the spiritual school with me and I needed to get away from him as far away as I could. And so I ended up in another relationship a little too quickly and basically <laughs> through that that relationship um, was not conducive to me being on my spiritual journey. He knew what, what my roots were, mm. but he pretended like it was okay at first. And then when I got pregnant, then everything changed. And so for several years, then I couldn't talk, talk about it around him because it would turn into an argument. Mm. And so when I finally left him, I was like, okay, I have to do some deep dive healing here for myself. Mm. And so that got me back on the spiritual path and really diving deep into ancestral patterns that my family had had and really um, needing to look at, okay, where, where are these patterns coming from and realizing, okay, you know, it really is through my ancestral line, my epigenetic line. And so when I was able to really heal and, and of course we're human so that healing is continuing throughout life. Hmm. But when I really found my worth, I regained my self love. That's when I started, like I, that's when I started the spiritual business because hmm. I'm like, okay, I want to help other people in this deep healing hmm. work. And hmm. so the first modality that I got trained in was past life regression therapy. And what was super interesting about that is, you know, while some of my clients, you know, a lot of them were having earth lives that we would go to, but some of them would go to non earth lives. And right. so it's kind of what transitioned me back into, okay, well, let's start thinking about things off of earth. And then I was having my own kind of memories experiences with that. Mm -hmm. And so when I made the connection with my Arcturian family, I didn't know who they were at the time, but I was taking a psychic intuition class. And there was a lady who, when I described what they looked like, um, she was like, okay, that sounds like either the Arcturians or the blue avians. And so when I went home and Googled what those were, because I had no clue, when I saw the images of the Arcturians, it's exactly what I had seen in this journey that I had been on. And so that validated that. And then, so over the last five years, I've developed that connection with them and really started talking to them, letting them um, move energy through my body. 
Mm-hmm. And last year I let them, um, so I started channeling them through writing and then I started letting them channel vocally through me. And then this year that became a bridge to working with 12 additional ET races that I are, I know that I have an aspect of. And so, you know, we are multidimensional beings in my understanding. And so we don't just have this one earth life. We have multiple lives, infinite lives. Mm -hmm. And because at the quantum level, all timelines are existing simultaneously. We have the ability to tap into these other lives. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to tap into my life as a Syrian or my life in the Orion world or my life as a Zeta, Mm -hmm. my life as a reptilian and channel their wisdom, their energy from that realm. And so really understanding who some of these different beings are and knowing that, okay, there are some ET groups that are very polarized, just like we earth humans are. So you're going to have some individuals that might be more service to self versus service to others. Mm -hmm. But then you have all of these higher dimensional groups that really have pure love their unity consciousness they understand that we're all connected to each other and so for me that is who I connect with and so it really like I get into raising my vibration so that I can only call in the higher dimensional beings Hmm. and um so and then I I discovered this year that I am part of the Zeta hybrid program which I kind of suspected I was um there were Tell some us what the Zeta hybrid uh, program is. Okay. okay, so the the Zetas are a particular group of gray aliens or ETs. There are a lot of different gray ETs out there coming from different star systems. And so when people are talking about grays, you can't put them all in one basket. But the Zetas specifically have this story that they they really um, cherish mental, logical aspects of themselves in their evolution. And so they actually bred out all their emotions so that they were only mental and logical. Well, ultimately what that did to them is it created them being sterile. They can no longer reproduce in the way that we do biologically. So they had to clone themselves. Well, that ultimately was creating them to become extinct. And so they realize the errors of their ways and they d- decided that we as humans, we have up to 22 different ET races in our DNA. And so we're a really good mixture of things throughout our galaxy, throughout the universe. And so, and we have emotions. Now our emotions are a little too extreme. So Zetas have a soul level contract with some earth humans. And so I'm part of this where before I was born as earth Lisa, I signed up to be part of this contract with the Zetas that they take the best parts of their DNA and they take the best parts of the human DNA and they are combining that to create a spiritually advanced race Mm -hmm. of ETs, the hybrids. And so this becomes a vehicle that the Zetas can reincarnate into and humans can reincarnate into should they choose. And so people who experience being taken or have their eggs taken, their sperm taken, some, some women have experienced being pregnant and then all of a sudden there's nothing there and the doctor's like, we don't know where it went because it, it wasn't a miscarriage per se. Mm-hmm. And so there are a lot of, people that are part of that program that don't remember that they signed up for it. And some have fear about it. Some feel victimized about it. But when you understand from that soul level that you agreed to be part of the program, it kind of changes that story for you, changes the perspective. Mm -hmm. And you understand for the greater good, like why you agreed to be part of that. Fascinating. Yeah, it's fascinating because I'm literally just thinking, you know, uh, I'm thinking for some people, they're going to be watching my podcast and be going, well, you know, Richard, uh, he's finally, finally lost it to have um, <laughs> to have Lisa on the show. And I'm going, well, wait a minute. There is e- enormous amounts of even physical uh, people having you know, implants in their body. Um, yes. There's been 
Uh, if we think about Skinwalker Ranch, there's so many things we don't know. We know about materialization of objects. We know about dematerialization of objects. When you have remote viewing able to send a consciousness over space and time to another space to go and see what's there and then even in communicate on a on a mental level with people in the past and so on uh, and and now to to learn their plans and intentions then where do we draw the line and so for me it's like okay but i'm curious like how um uh, how do you what's your take on say people being abducted and having implants put in on, on on you and then being followed in a way that it feels scary to them so what i don't well i mean and for you and your audience you know please take take whatever resonates with you and if it doesn't resonate with you i'm not here to try to convince anyone I'm sharing things from my experience and perspective. And so I love that about you. What I would say to that, what I understand from that soul level is that nothing happens to us that we did not agree to. Mm. So for even including like my very abusive marriage, mm. I signed up for that at a soul level. And the mechanism of that is evolution is to learn lessons, to grow, to evolve. Mm. And so for me, I chose some really challenging experiences in this earth life that I was able to move through, um, whether it was relationships or health issues, I was able to move through to kind of be a guide for others to show you don't have to stay stuck. And so the people who, you know, maybe are taken, there are different groups that take people for different reasons. And some of the, some of the people, including Whitley Strieber, you know, he had fear when he wrote that book, Communion, but now 30 some years later, he has yeah. a totally different understanding. And yeah. even Travis, who was taken in 75, who, you know, in Arizona, he was really scared after coming back from that. And, but then now he totally understands that they were trying to help him. Their craft had radiated him and they were trying to heal him yeah. when he was gone. And so, you know, when, again, when you understand, when you're able, I think, to get to the deeper subconscious level where all the memories are locked away and you understand from that higher perspective, then you understand, okay, you chose for that to happen and why And um, people have different reasons, different karmic reasons, different lessons they want to come in and experience here on earth. And we, you know, we have free will here on earth. And so at any point, if something, if someone's in your space, something that you don't like, you have every ability to change that and be like, no, no more. And we only, from an energetic perspective, quantum mechanics. So whatever frequency we are vibrating at, we can only have that in our space. Everything else can't even touch us and so you know there are, so there are a lot of ways to look at it like that but um when people are hypnotized regress to a deep enough level with a therapist that actually asks the right kinds of questions then the people really understand what's going on and so i don't know if you're familiar with dolores cannon's work a little bit. Okay. So she has like 35, 40 years of regressing people to a very deep level, getting to their higher self, to the subcon deep subconscious level. Mm. And anyone who had kind of a fear response to being taken, missing time, whatever, all of them, she's never had one case in her thousands and thousands and thousands of cases where someone coming out of that was still afraid or didn't understand their part in it. Mm. And so some of the TV shows, um, when people are getting regressed, they're doing it, I, in my opinion, too superficially. Yeah. They're keeping the brain and the ego state and mm. not in the deeper levels. It, it's fascinating because I think, you know, um, 
it, it does seem like there's this um, ego uh, anxiety about even like existing or non-existing. And it, it brings me to a curious question. It's just come up in my mind and, and uh, it's not a criticism in any way, but I'm curious, like if you're an ET as a race, what would be so terrible if you died out? Why would that be so terrible? Like, like you become more logical and you say, okay, well, we became more logical and then we all died. Like, that's okay. Because we don't die. Nothing dies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So so you you might just, so do you feel that, I wonder, is that like an ego fear that, oh, I'm going to, we're all going to die out. It's like humans on the planet. The planet Earth is going to be, is going to finish. It's like the end of the world. No, humans might die out, but the world will probably still be here. Yeah. Yeah. And no, our consciousness is not going to die out. That is a good question. And again, some of these different ET groups are residing in different dimensional levels, which means that they understand things at different perspectives. And so some of these Zetas are probably closer to being in our specific frequency, which is how we can interact with them in the way that we do, you know, as opposed to like a seventh dimensional being they they would never they understand like right. okay they're just energy right so so there are i think there is some ego they're still involved um with some of these groups again oh. especially the polar the ones that are experiencing that polarity duality like we do mm -hmm. fascinating and and i've got a question because like uh, some people will so this is something that somebody's going to be thinking and 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 uh, they won't have an opportunity to ask but of course they can contact you and i'll put all your uh, details in the show notes and the, the youtube uh, what do you feel about people that say like uh aliens and demons i'll just put it like that box are aliens the ets are they like aliens and demons of the past what do you say to that oh. I don't think ETs are demons. <laughs> and again, we do have, again, we have higher dimensional realms. We've got lower dimensional realms. And when you really understand the nature of the universe, um, you from a higher perspective, all none of it is bad. There is no good or bad. It just yeah. is. Yeah. So it's just what someone chose to experience yeah i mean when i say demon I, i'm really i you might say this is for my audience like when i say that i'm very aware that certain cultures took somebody another culture's god angel and then said no that's a demon in our mm -hmm. in our new religion that that, that one oh I, want, I don't want to believe anything he says yeah um yeah. he's gonna trick you yeah so i'm not I'm not, I'm aware that these words are, yes, they're very, uh, you know, exciting for people to use and scary, but it's not necessarily uh, as black and white. And yes, I, I do get, I, I, you know, I think we, we all experience ourselves on different levels of consciousness and uh, on the level of consciousness of um, that we are all one and anything I do, which is, anything I do is actually contributing to the one. So there is actually nothing that I could do that is wrong or in any way, any way harm right. anyone in the big picture. Um, the big picture, I know. Well, and that's, a, that's the interesting thing as being human is we have the perception of good and bad. And we have that maybe ego experience of good and bad or right or wrong, but in the bigger picture, and this is what all of my higher dimensional ET groups all agree on, that there is no good or bad. Mm. There just is. It's just, it's all experience, all stuff feeding back to source. Right. And it's like an amusement park ride here on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> We're playing, okay, what That's ride are we going to go on? <laughs> Now, I'm curious. I mean, I would love to. Uh, we we've met, made a reference to your to your book, um, but I'm curious. People wanted to come and talk to you. What do they come and talk to you about? What do they they book a session with you for for to connect with their alien or you know? I I have a lot of different kinds of sessions because um, not only do I work in the ET realm, but I am 
here to be earth human as well, right? I am born in this human body this time around, even though I am primarily from other places. Mm-hmm. And so number one, I, I human design is a modality that I do, which really helps people to understand how they energetically flow easier mm-hmm. on earth and in this universe um, and how they get to their own answers because we all have the answers inside of us. And so I love helping people understand that information. Mm-hmm. I also work with clients with the, I traditionally it's called past life regression therapy. I'm trying to change that terminology to parallel life regression okay. because all, again, quantum level, all timelines exist simultaneously. There really is no past. There is no future. Everything is now. And so with that, clients come to me with blockages or limitations that they want to overcome. That might be relationship, business, money, health. Mm -hmm. And so with that particular modality, we're able to get to the root cause, which may happen to be in this life, this earth life, but often it's in a completely different life Mm -hmm. where we're able to get to the root cause, rewrite the story or understand it from the higher perspective. And when you do that and come back to this reality, what it does is it physically starts to rewire your brain to the new reality that you've changed it to. And so that blockage is essentially removed. And then, then I do have people that are more curious about, you know, the galactic, the ET stuff. And so I help people meet their galactic family and guides and really understand their place, like who they are, where they come from. Mm. Because again, we're all more than just this one human life. I think it's really beautiful. I mean, I, I I really feel that you're you're providing, uh, you know, very for for me that one that sticks with me is like, um, you know, obviously it's it's to do with me, of course, but it's like you're helping people who've had experiences, and they're like able to integrate them, and they're able. To, somebody said, yeah, I just yeah, I just had I don't know how many years of this. I understand. So some of your experiences, but I don't have your background, but I understand some of your experiences. You're not crazy. And let's find a way that we can integrate this. And by the way, you may be able to heal a load of stuff on the way, you know, yeah. going on for you. So uh, it's really beautiful. And, and they can contact you through Facebook or, or email or how do they connect with you? So um, I am on Facebook. Either my business page is Dr. Lisa Thompson. Um, and then I have a couple of groups. So I have Sacred Soul Spaces with Dr. Lisa Thompson and Connection to the Cosmos. Mm-hmm. Um, and my website, I actually, for anyone that's kind of curious or really wants to maybe try to meet their galactic family and guides, I have a free 20 minute meditative journey on my website that guides people to meet their galactic family and guides. And so my website is mysticmanta.com or drlisajthompson.com. Mm-hmm. And then my YouTube channel, Connection to the Cosmos with Dr. Lisa Thompson. Lovely. And and so um, uh, one, one thing, oh, what's the name of your podcast? The podcast Connection to the Cosmos with Dr. Lisa Thompson. Okay. Well, we've got, yeah. I think we've got the, I, I would love, I mean, I, I feel like I am supporting you by interviewing you and I feel like you coming on here is supporting me as well because I think uh you know it's fascinating uh it's fascinating hearing I felt like uh somebody said so who do you interview and it was like I was like well I kind of interview a spectrum of people that I know and I want to expand it because I want to just not be inside my reality box I would like to like chip away at that and and uh, go in the outside. So it's really, uh, really a new area of uh, that I've explored today. And I thank you so much. It's so fascinating. I think we could talk for hours about it. Thank well, you so I much. Really appreciate you inviting me on, especially since this isn't your normal kind of topic that you focus on, and really. One of my missions is to shift the fear-based narrative of the media, government, and Hollywood. Mm -hmm. because That is so rampant. And it's time to move out of that into joy, light, love, 
and harmony with earth with each it's, other it's like how can you say like uh the reality when you leave your home is nothing like the reality that's portrayed to us on tv you know with the less chance of being gunned down yeah or whatever you know when we leave our home but if we look at tv we'd, we'd be terrified of well number one going to america because like the even the border patrol usa you know tv show makes you think oh my god they've got cameras and they're gonna they're gonna talk about you know probes you know be careful going to america is dangerous but of course the reality is quite different so um it's lovely that you're supporting people uh, from that point of view so i will say have a lovely day i think you're, is it evening now for you um it's afternoon okay. <laughs> yeah well have a lovely rest of the day and we'll keep in touch i appreciate it